Have you ever wanted to have a five gallon tank on your desk or on your nightstand, but you just don't have room for it? Well, I'm gonna show you what you can do with a two gallon aquarium. And I'm also gonna show you how I made the perfect shrimp sanctuary. There's a ton of tiny tank kits out there. All the manufacturers make them and they're really cool. They come with pretty much everything you'll need to get up and running. They almost all come with the tank lids, light, and filtration. The only thing that's missing on them is heaters. And to be honest, I've never figured out why that is. I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't know. I, it, it comes with everything else. Why not include a heater anyway? A question I get all the time is what kind of fish are okay to put in these tiny tanks? And by tiny tanks, I mean the ones that are smaller than five gallons. There's one gallon kits, two and three gallons, and when you have a tank that small, your options are very limited for fish. With me being a beta person, you're probably wondering about my thoughts on them going in these tanks. Well, I've always stated on this channel that beta should be in five gallons or larger, and I'm gonna stick with that. Will a beta survive in a two gallon tank? Yeah, but does that mean they're happy and healthy? Of course not. About six months ago, one of our distributors sent us both of Aquatop's new Venti tanks. There's a five gallon and the two gallon version. I fell in love with the five gallon version right away and said that it might be the best beta tank that's ever been made. Why is that? Well, most of these kits come with water pumps to filter the water. The pumps do a great job, but in the case of a beta, they almost do too good of a job. Betas like their water to be moving very slow, almost still, and these pumps are just too powerful and blow them all over the tank. With the Venti, there's corner sponge filters that hook up to an air pump. This does a great job at filtering the water and the bubbles don't give the beta a hard time. So the five gallon Venti is great for betas, but what about the two gallon version? Well, I knew I wasn't gonna put a beta in it, so what else can I do? Well, I thought about it for a while and I finally made a decision. I had the idea for a really cool scape I wanted to do in a five gallon for a beta, but then it hit me and I was like, hmm, I can do it on a smaller scale and instead of a beta, I'll do it for shrimp. I did escape in one of the Aquatop Pisces five gallons about a year ago and I put some cherry shrimp in there. Those shrimps have been doing what shrimp do and that's multiply like crazy. Shrimp are something I've always struggled with, but for some reason these have done really well and they've brought me so much joy over the last year. There's another thing I've fallen in love with since escaping that shrimp tank and that's moss. I love incorporating mosses into my scapes. They're so easy to keep, they grow like crazy and they look amazing in pretty much any situation. And you know what? That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. So what if I did a scape for shrimp that focused primarily on moss? That sounds perfect for this two gallon tank, right? Now that I knew what I was gonna do, I started gathering materials. I started with Tropica substrate, some small rocks, and small magnolia and sycamore leaves that I picked up from my yard. John complains about having to clean up all these leaves out of the yard, but I say, hey, let them stay. I can use them in escape. It's free, you know? The next thing I used was a Fritz Nature box. Now listen. I've always known the people at Fritz are smart, but this nature box is absolutely genius. They include all the little leaves, sticks, and cones that we all like to use in our scapes. I would say the only problem is I wanna, I'd rather have one that's like 10 times the size. Like, Fritz, can you make me one that has like 10 times as much stuff in it, please? Next was plants. Obviously, with this tank being so small, there's only so many plants that can be used, but I selected the, okay, are you ready for this? Cryptocorini 
D and the Echinodorus reni. But you know, I'm just gonna stick with Crips and Rennie. Yeah, cause I don't say it right, sorry. These two plants will get a pretty good size, so I'll have to keep them under control, but they'll look great right in the middle of the tank. Just please don't judge me for how I say these, these names. I wanted to do something I've never done before in Escape, and that's to attach the moss to a piece of screen that I could attach to the walls. It might not look the best in the very beginning because you can still see the white through it, but as the moss grows and spreads, it'll fill in all those gaps and become a moss wall. Super cool, huh? As intimidating as this is because I've never done anything like this before, it's also super exciting because I like to expand my abilities as an aquascaper. If you want to get better at something, you've got to expand and try new things. Some might work and some might not, but you'll never know until you try. Well, I, I kind of sounded like I was talking to one of my kids, but uh, you know what I mean. Okay, so here we go again with my pronunciation of plants. I chose the Taxophilium spiky and the Taxophilium barbari. I think I'm saying it right, but I like to just say moss anyways. But uh, yeah. I'll put the names on the screen and you, you can read the names however you want. Both of these mosses are very similar, but as they grow, they develop slightly different coloring and a little bit different texture as well. Both of these plants are tissue cultures from Tropica. This means they were literally grown in a lab, so there's no threat of pests or diseases in these plants. With tissue culture plants, you just take them out of the cup, wash off the gel material from the roots, and separate them into as many pieces as you want. I used four cups of moss total for this tank, but you could use less. It'll just take a little longer for it to fill in. I made sure to add them in different spaces so it wasn't a consistent pattern. Once all the moss walls were done, it was just a matter of planting the other two plants into the substrate and then randomly spreading out the items from the nature box and the stuff from my yard. This little tank was a lot of fun to skate, but I gotta be honest, I wasn't totally sure how I felt about it when it was all done. I mean, I was happy with it, but the problem is you're looking at an incomplete project. It's not gonna show its full potential until it has some time to grow and fill in. So I waited, and I waited some more. But while the tank was coming to life, there's some other things I did to get it going. If there's one thing I've learned about shrimp, it's that they don't like a perfectly clean tank. They like to have some gnarliness to scavenge through, so I had to implement one of my favorite tricks. I had to add beta poop. Yep, you heard me correctly. We all know that for a tank to cycle, it needs an ammonia source. Well, what better source is there than little beta buds? I go through my beta system every day with a turkey baster and suck out the poop. When I have a tank that I need to cycle, I take that poop and I put it in the tank. It sounds gross, but it works. John has joked a couple of times, we should start bottling that and selling it. We'll call it Lisa's bottle of poop. Anyway, my strategy worked and the tank started to come around and after a little time had passed, I knew it was safe and I added seven shrimp. That might not seem like a lot, but the way they reproduce, it'll take no time at all for the tank to be full. So again, with the waiting, waiting on more shrimp to be produced and waiting for the moss to spread. And after about two months, this is what it looks like. You can see the moss filled in perfectly and you've got to look really hard to see any of the white screen behind it. I love this because it's given it that moss wall effect that I was looking for. The shrimp love it and I love it. I guess that means it's perfect. Oh, and by the way, the shrimp really aren't reproducing in this tank and it's mainly because I take babies out of my other tank and put them in here. I've taken quite a few more out and put them in here, but they're not ready to reproduce yet. All in all, 
I think this turned out really well and I'm very happy with it. I absolutely love how the shrimp just play around in there. And you know what, the moss, it grew in really nicely. And I think the plants are doing well too. I can't wait to do another one. And who knows how that's gonna turn out, but I will definitely share it with you. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things that John hates for people to say at the end of a video. And have a wonderful day. Bye.